Okay, so let's, uh, let's start the, the lecture. Um, all right. Um, so today, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we're going to do this, this group activity. So, um, so hopefully this is a fun day, fun lecture. So we'll be uh, going outside uh, on, the <coughs> on the lawn, on the, uh, the oval to do that. So a little bit less woody than on the figure, but on the picture. But <laughs> Okay, so before doing that, so it's, it's basically uh, around this um, calculation of prefix scan. So I'm going to do a little bit of kind of introduction about this type of calculation, what it's about, and how to implement it in parallel, so a little bit of theory. Um, and then after that, hopefully everybody's really completely confused, and then we can start the exercise. <laughs> and you can think about all this. All right, so... Uh, so actually, the, the basis for the prefix scan is the uh, just so-called regular scan, which is just actually a reduction. So this we've, uh, we've, we've seen before a couple of times. So I'm just going to go over that quickly. But you know, if you want to uh, calculate a reduction, so essentially sum up all these numbers in PAL. Okay? In principle, this is a sequential operation. You do 3 plus 1, plus 7, plus 0, plus 4, and so on. It's so very sequential. Uh, but if you have, you know, a lot of processors, you can accelerate this, um, and it's a little tricky. You have to do these sort of pairwise summations. If you realize that instead of summing up all these numbers one by one, you can take pairs, okay, and sum up the pairs. So uh, that is a, a pair operation. You can have four processes, uh, processors working on uh, this addition. Then you get four numbers. And so you basically use uh, associativity, associativity of, uh, of uh, the addition uh, and you know, uh, perform subsequent additions of these four numbers, get two numbers and so on, up to one number. So here you have one processor working, two and four. And uh, so you need four processes to do this. Uh, and in terms of complexity, uh, there's an important concept which is um, you know, how long does it take to run this algorithm. So we'll sort of go over that in more details, uh, well, a little bit more when discussing MPI and uh, in, in the last homework, which kind of discusses a little bit, uh, a couple of concepts around that. But in terms of the parallel execution of this algorithm, uh, there are two important concepts. The first one is uh, the basic one, which is how long does it take to execute uh, you know, this algorithm, assuming you have enough processes, okay, or enough processors. Right? So you assume that you have, you know, an unlimited amount of processors. Uh, well, here you really only need four in this example. Uh, and then how long does it take to, to do this? Well, even if you have, you know, uh, a, a very large number of processors, uh, still it will take essentially, uh, you know, uh, three passes to do this. So first, one addition done by four processors, so it's the time to run one addition, then, you know, second uh, pass for this addition, and third pass, so in three time units, so to speak, you get this, you get this done. This is the first concept. And so when you analyze a parallel algorithm, uh, you know, you can do this type of analysis where you assume you have a large number of processors, and then you want to see how many passes it takes uh, to go through the, the, the computation, and that's how long it takes. Okay, second concept is uh, sort of related to that. A little bit less important, but it's still you know, kind of an important measure. It's uh, what is the uh, computational cost or number of operations you have to perform in PAL. Okay, so this is slightly less obvious. But if you do the reduction sequentially, uh, you know, so what do you have here? You have eight numbers, so there's really only uh, seven additions to do. Uh, whereas in PAL, there's actually more additions, okay? Uh, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I got this wrong. Um, okay, so I guess it's just the same number <laughs> uh, in this example. Uh, but so we'll, we'll see that in the prefix scan, you know, you can get different numbers of operations. And uh, so yeah, okay, so here somehow you get exactly seven. But it's very, um, it's not uncommon that when you look at the number of operations done uh, in PAL, it's actually more operations than uh, was done uh, sequentially, okay? So in this case, it's just the same, but sometimes it's, it's more, okay? It's, I guess it cannot be less, but it can be uh, definitely more, yeah? Maybe if you didn't have an exact power of two, you would have to pad the 
Uh, more. Oh, yeah, right. Maybe if it was not a power of two possible, you may end up with more. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. You're right, yeah. Yeah, typically, it's, 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 it's always a... Uh, well, this is a very simple algorithm, so it's going to be very close. Uh, so this is, for example, an algorithm called work efficient in the sense that the number of operations is basically uh, in parallel and sequential. Their, uh, uh, work, well, the defin definition of work efficient, either work efficient means that they're equal or more reasonably, they're simply proportional to each other. Okay, but in, in, so uh, if you look at the ratio of number of flops in parallel divided by number of flops in sequential, that ratio essentially is bounded, okay? It doesn't increase. So I'll show you an example, a repeated scan, where actually this is not the case, the algorithm is not work efficient. Okay, so this is what we have to do uh, for the exercise, so so-called prefix scan. Uh, so you're given, you know, you're gonna be given a bunch of numbers. Uh, so, um, so you, you know, hopefully you guys have uh, brought some, uh, some paper uh, and you know you have to cut it in, in small pieces, so I'll go over that. Uh, but you're going to be given uh, you know a bunch of numbers, okay? And this is the output of the prefix scan. So the prefix scan sometimes starts at zero, so it could be zero, three, eight, and so on. But here we're going to make it start at three. So essentially, the first number is the same, and then next one is three plus five, fourteen is three, five, six, sixteen, and so on up to here. 20 is basically the result of the reduction. Okay, so it's sort of a, it's also a cumulative sum, so you do the, the uh, sum up to the point where you add, okay? And so, for example, if you give you uh, an array with n numbers, then the prefix scan, the output, is another array of n numbers, okay? Okay, so, so let's look at two algorithms, so essentially, you know, I want you, uh, so we'll go into the exercise, but uh, you know, you're gonna have to do this prefix scan in parallel. So I want to present two algorithms. So these are sort of computer algorithms. Uh, so you know, as humans, you probably want to have something slightly different, but you know, I want to review this, this uh, uh, algorithm so you get an idea of how this can be done uh, in parallel, okay? So work efficient is um, essentially, you know, if you go back here, you know, you can recognize that, uh, for example, 14 is a result of a reduction on the first part of the array, and 16 is a reduction, you know, up to index four and so on. And so, you know, we have a tree to do reductions, and so similarly, we're doing prefix scan, uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna want to use, uh, you know, essentially reduction trees, but to do a prefix scan. So this can be done, um, in, so in our first algorithm, which is a work efficient Algorithm, so number of flops is more or less the same as the sequential number of flops up to uh, uh, some constant. Okay, and there's sort of two phases. So this algorithm is uh, well, these parallel algorithms are always a little complicated. First, first part is relatively straightforward. It's a uh, collect or reduction. So this follows very closely just a reduction steps. So and again, you know, we need to do a reduction for in some sense all entries. So the second phase in which uh, these partial results are sort of distributed, so we get uh, you know n numbers corresponding to the this um, this cumulative sum. So here is how it works. So I'm going to uh, stay on this slide for a little bit. Uh, hopefully, you know we can make sense of uh, what's what's happening here. So the first part is reasonably uh, straightforward because essentially that is exactly the same uh, uh, the same workflow or flow of information as in the uh, reduction uh, tree, okay? So you start with all the pairs, okay? You got the sum. So the way, you know, this diagram works, okay? It's a sort of a so-called circuit representation of the algorithm. So the input is at the top. So you have, uh, I think here, uh, 16. Okay, so you have 16 numbers, we imagine, are at the top. And then the operations are sort of going from top to bottom, okay? And uh, so every time you have a plus, for example, the first plus here, well, it's, let's take this one, it's, it's easier to point. This plus here means you take the number currently at this location, so it's actually the original number here at index two, 
uh, take this number, so actually this one is the result of an addition, so you take these two numbers, add, and write the result here. Okay, so this is the um, notation here, it's a so-called circuit notation. Okay, so initially uh, you start zero, one, you add, and you write the result at one. And then two, three, add, write the result at three, and four, five, write the result at five, and so on and so forth, okay? So you do all these additions, and then you take the results of the pairs, okay, and sum them up. So zero, one, two, three, you write the result at three. So here you have essentially uh, the result of adding everything up to this point. Okay, and here you have the result of adding everything in this range, and so on. And then, you know, you just keep going, adding these two guys. Okay, so here essentially the result of the sum all the way up to here, the sum all the way up to here, and here the final reduction. So actually, right here, that the final reduction, so that is actually the correct result for the last one. Okay, so just copy straight. First one is kind of trivial, it's a straight copy. Okay. Uh, and then the other ones, essentially, the idea is that, for example, uh, well, let's just start with a simple one. Let's take this one. So this one is supposed to be the result of all the previous you know, guys to the left. Uh, and essentially, you're going to look at uh, uh, sort of the binary representation of this number, if you wish. So for example, like, this is basically uh, you know, uh, three, 3 plus 1 to get to uh, So actually, it might be easier to almost count uh, from 1, but anyway, 3 plus 1. Uh, so you're going to get the result of, you know, you want a uh, partial result of summing up, up to here, which actually is available right here. And then you just need to add this one entry here, okay? Uh, and then similarly, you know, you can uh, uh, do the same thing here, okay? Uh, but the way this is going to work is now you have sort of 4 plus 2. So you go back to the previous adding up to 4 and then adding up to 2, okay? And, uh, and then once you have, so for example, this one, you know, requires one more pass, okay? So essentially, if you look at the binary representation and sort of look at how many uh, bits are equal to one, that's sort of how many passes, you know, you need to, uh, to do to get there, okay? So when you're, you know, here, just no operation. Here is just essentially uh, sort of two bits, so you just add. Okay, here also two bits. Uh, here three bits, and might be, you know, even more bits equal to one right here, okay? So essentially, you do this reduction, and then you have a way to, uh, from all these partial results, and sort of looking at the binary representation of each number, uh, you have a way to propagate these partial results to get uh, essentially what amounts to reduction at uh, every output. Okay, so you can look at these slides online if you want. Okay, it's on the, on the GitHub for today's lecture, lecture 15, so you have this uh, figure here. Okay, any, any question on this? Okay, so there's a reduction, and then there's a distribute, distribute fix. Okay, so, um, all right, so now, you know, you have uh, some, some results here, so let me just go over that. So first, number of passes. So number of passes, when you do reduction, you have log 2n passes, okay? And here, there is a reduction followed by this sort of distribution, so just staring at it, you can see that it's 2 uh, log n passes, okay? So it's twice longer as a uh, just a, a straight uh, reduction, okay? And uh, if you look at the amount of work, so this one is, is uh, kind of trickier, uh, although staring at it, you know, I sort of uh, empirically observed that the reduction uh, had n flops, okay? Uh, and so, you know, you multiply by two. So you have actually two times uh, the sequential flops, okay? Two t t so the, the scan is just n flops. So here you have essentially two n flops, okay? So amount of work is two times sequential flops. So it's still called uh, work efficient. I mean, there is a factor of two, so it's, it's not, you know, uh, perfect. Uh, but it's called work efficient because essentially the ratio per work divided by sequential work is a bounded number equal to two. It doesn't grow. You will see that the next algorithm actually grows. Uh, so, you know, it seems reasonable that this ratio should be bounded, but you'll see that actually, you know, uh, next al the next algorithm has, uh, sorry, I don't know why it's not, 
doing this correctly. Uh, the, um, uh, in Bell, sometimes it's actually beneficial to do a lot more work because if it allows reducing the number of passes, okay? And for example, if you look at the previous, uh, you know, previous plot here, uh, you can see that a lot of the units are idle. So this is kind of the, the, the idea. A lot of the units are idle. So by making these units uh, busy, we actually are going to be able to reduce the number of passes. And there's no mystery. If you make the units busy, you're increasing the number of flops. So you're going to be work inefficient. Uh, you're going to fill up this uh, you know, diagram here with some plus signs. So it's going to be a lot more flops being executed, uh, but it will go faster. Okay? So essentially, this algorithm is good if you, have, you don't have too many uh, processors. So, so actually, you know, um, let's say here, you, if you have eight processors, uh, then they're all busy during the first phase and so on. So maybe this is not actually a great algorithm. But if you have less than eight, for example, you have only four uh, processors, uh, then this is good, okay? Because the, uh, you're going to be able to extract some parallelism, but the number of flops is kind of reasonable, so, uh, so you're going to do uh, well. Okay, so, um, all right. Okay, uh, so this is the second algorithm, so-called Kiddis Steel algorithm. Uh, and the idea here is to, again, go back to you know, the prefix scan and observe that essentially uh, you know, we're doing many, many uh, uh, tree reductions in, in uh, uh, you know, so essentially each output is the result of a, of a reduction. Uh, and so you can view this as a concurrent, concurrent reductions. And so perhaps you can use then concurrent trees with multiple sort of uh, tree traversals in order to calculate these reductions. Um, and in fact, for example, okay, right, so this is basically the idea. So, so this is, you know, different diagram, different type of diagram. So first of all, you can see that there's a lot more pluses, okay, and this translates into, uh, this is a work inefficient algorithm. There's a lot more, uh, you know, work than in sequential algorithm. But if you count the number of passes, it's actually only uh, log n passes, okay? You can see that here there's a jump of one, two, four, and eight. So you can see that, you know, if you have n uh, entry, uh, you know, input, then in log two n, you will be done with this algorithm. Um, so the algorithm here is, is different, uh, but if you stare at it for, for a little bit, uh, what you simply will recognize, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very clever algorithm. What it does is essentially it says, okay, well, let's take every you know, output I have, okay? Let's say this number here. And uh, so I essentially need to do a reduction and I'm gonna do a tree reduction, okay? So let's imagine doing that, okay? So you're gonna have N tree reductions, uh, you know, uh, happening in parallel, okay? So that would be not super efficient. And uh, what's not efficient is that many of these tree reductions, you know, share common operations. For example, all these two reductions are going to start by doing these pairwise additions. So clearly, no need to repeat, repeat that. So, okay, fine. Let's just start with, uh, you know, uh, just a, uh, a pairwise, pairwise addition. Okay? And uh, so after that, you know, things get a little bit more complicated. For example, here, you recognize, uh, you know, adding, uh, well, let's see this guy, for example, here. You're going to add two pairs, okay? And the next guy over is also adding two pairs, but sort of shifted by one. Okay, so this is where you're starting seeing that you're doing multiple sort of tree reduction that are sort of, uh, you know, ideally at the end, everything is just shifted by one. Okay, so you do mul these multiple tree reductions, and then you just keep going like this. For example, here you add things that are separated by four, and here things that are separated by, by eight. Okay, and, uh, and so you get, get all the correct outputs by essentially, you know, doing these, uh, Three reductions are sort of shifted by one during every every pass. Um, okay. Any 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 question on this? Um, yeah, it's it's not exactly clear to me from the picture how the algorithm actually works. Okay. Uh, when you have the so when you have the eight plus signs on the bottom, is that is that it? You're done. Where right. Is, where's the answer? Or 
Okay, so the answer is just, the answer is always here. Okay, this is the output. Every, every, uh, the end of each line here is basically contains the output. You, have to, you can think of this as sort of each line being sort of a memory location. Okay, and for example, when you take this guy, it means uh, take this memory location, this memory location, add, and then write at this location. Okay, so for example, you know, let's take the, the first one. First one is, again, unchanged. So that, Let, would, that would be the, the cumulative sum. Of index zero, which is just the number itself. Yeah, and okay. then the... So let's look at the last one. Last one is actually just a straight, uh, so it's, it's a tree reduction, but sort of maybe done you know, a little bit differently. Uh, but it's the same tree reduction as before. So essentially, here you're going to have the last two pairs, okay, and then the uh, two pairs before that, that are then added here. Okay, so the, this number here is everything to the right, you know, uh, the four to the right. Okay, so this one also, if you look at it carefully, is going to be all four to the right. So when you add these guys, you get everybody uh, eight to the right. Okay, and this one also eight, I'm sorry, to the left. Eight to the left, and here eight to the left. Okay, you're going to add those together, and so you know, this is a true reduction for the last one. And if you look at this guy, well, actually this guy is, is pretty much exactly the same thing, except that it's shifted by one. Okay, and uh, you know, so for example, this guy here, you know, again, you do. Uh, so now you have to do exactly the same thing, but essentially forgetting about the last one. So you're going to pair addition here, pair addition, and then addition of four numbers to the left. Okay, and then this guy is going to be four to the left, and then plus four to the left. So this guy is basically uh, eight to the left. Okay, and then and so on. So, on. Okay. Uh, and so uh, and so since you're sort of looking at summing things coming from from the left, you know, uh, so this guy, you know, just no operation. This guy just summing one guy to the left, and then essentially you're done. And then here you're summing, you know, two to the left and two to the left, okay, so it's gonna be four to the left, okay? And then this one is basically this one, and then, you know, the next two pairs, so. So, so it's basically, uh, uh, yeah, t t uh, so it's basically just doing tree reductions where you're sort of storing the, uh, the results in the rightmost node and then shifting everything by one so that, you know, you get the correct uh, reduction at the end. But the key is that, you know, you're, constantly reusing these pairwise summation. For example, this pairwise summation is used for the, the last guy, and then this pairwise summation is used for the last one, okay? Uh, and then it's also used for, for this one, and, um, okay, so now I'm getting lost. Okay, that's it, and, th and then this one will be used. So you so you're reusing you're reusing essentially you're writing tree reductions for every output and then sort of looking at the operation that sort of overlap and avoiding these repetitions. So to speak. I'll probably need to just read, read, read the algorithm at some point, but thank you. Um, it's, it's a little confusing. Okay. But well, reading the algorithm is actually even more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> the code is like you know minus two to the i. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, actually, the code is uh, well. The code is actually you, you can see what the code is. The the first pass is take entry i and add i minus one. Okay. Next pass is take entry i and uh, you know add essentially uh, two over so uh, i minus two and here you do i minus four. So at every pass, you do i minus two to the j. At past, uh, J, uh, J pass. That, that was actually. Uh, <laughs> well, that's clear. <laughs> okay, that's clear. Okay, uh, cool. All right. Um, okay, so I, mean, I can post the algorithm online. Um, yeah, so here you basically shift, you know, taking one to the left, here minus two, minus four, minus eight. <laughs> Um, okay, and so in terms of number of passes, it's just log n pass. Uh, in terms of 
number of operations, okay, it's a little bit difficult to count, but to simplify, uh, you can roughly say, uh, okay, there is n, uh, n operations at every pass, you know, roughly speaking. So you have log n passes, so you have n log n uh, operations, okay, whereas the scan is only essentially, uh, you know, n or n minus 1 additions. Uh, so you have an extra log n factor, okay? So in that sense, it's work inefficient. If you look at the ratio of parallel work divided by sequential work, it grows like log n, okay? So it's, it's unbounded as you increase the size of, uh, of the data, okay? So number of passes, so what this means is that this algorithm essentially runs twice as fast, but this assumes that you have a lot of processors available, okay? So if you have essentially eight processors to process 16 elements, uh, then you're golden. This is going to be faster, okay? If you have fewer, maybe four, or let's say even two pro uh, processors, uh, then this is going to be, uh, you know, that's not going to work. The number of, you know, the running time is going to be much more than log n, and you're going to be hurt by the fact that the amount of work is much greater compared to sequential flux, okay? So the optimal algorithm, you know, hence becomes a little complicated. It sort of depends on n and how many processes you have to, you know, uh, to process this. Okay. So again, you know, when a lot of processes are available, then the silly steel is superior, fewer passes, uh, but a lot more uh, work to be done. Uh, so if you have fewer processors, you know, you want to have the uh, work efficient algorithm. Okay? So I can post a uh, pseudocode for, for these algorithms after the, after the class. Okay, so let's uh, move on to our uh, fun exercise. Um, so actually, there's a um, sign-up sheet for today. Can you pass it around? <laughs> Uh, so if you can si sign your, uh, find your name and uh, sign it. Um, so, uh, so let's see how many students we have actually. Eight. Uh, so it looks like we're 22. So. Class uh, 22. So I say groups of, of seven. Yeah, groups of seven. I mean, yeah. so let, let's make three groups. Okay, so it should be three groups of seven. So I guess instead of eight players, three groups of seven players. Okay, and the idea is to do a parallel prefix scan, uh, but you know, uh, using human processors. So I'm going to explain what this means. Uh, okay. So first of all, how, how do you generate uh, the sequence? So I'll let you uh, self-organize, okay? So you're gonna form uh, uh, three teams, okay? Uh, and the first step is to, so I, each team will have your own, you know, prefix scan to calculate. Uh, prefix scan is four numbers, okay? Uh, and uh, so the way this is going to work out is, uh, you know, you can go online, on the, on the GitHub uh, repository in the code folder, this is Jared sequence. So you just compile uh, the code, you run it, okay? And uh, so when you, uh, when you run it, okay, you have to enter your uh, group number. So it's gonna be uh, one, two, or three, okay? Depending on the group you're assigned to, okay? And here is basically the output. Uh, so you enter your group number, okay, group one, and so this is going to be the sequence uh, you're going to be using. Okay, so, everybody, so now, you know, uh, it's a sort of pseudo-random sequence. And so, uh, you know, I, would, I, would, I could uh, uh, then pre-calculate the solution and so on. Uh, so I have the solution. Um, okay, so hold on a second. Let me just think about this for a second. Um, Okay, so why don't we start with this first. Um, so I'll explain the rules in a second. So, uh, but you know, this you need to do here.
here before getting out. So can you uh, now rearrange, so you have to uh, you know, move around your seat or whatever. Uh, but I want three groups of you know, roughly the same number of people, so let's say seven. So three groups of seven, and then once you're kind of assembled into groups, I'll give you a group number. Uh, then you can uh, download and run this code, uh, run it, and you have to then uh, 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 create 40 pieces of paper with uh, the numbers for the prefix schedule. So let's get going. And yeah, there's a sign-up sheet, so make sure you uh, get to write down your name on the, on the sign-up sheet. So let's see, so there's one group here. Okay, so we need group number one is here. Okay, so what other groups do we have? So there's one group here, we're gonna say one. So there's a group in the back and a group in the front. Okay, so uh, group number two is going to be in the front here. And then let's say the last group will be group number three here. Okay, so this is one. So make sure you have the right group number. <laughs> group one is here, group two is here, and in the back, group three. So I want seven people here, seven people in the back, and you guys are seven. Okay, they're good. So I need more people here, maybe one more person. Okay, group number two. Okay, and then three in the back. Okay, you guys are group number three. So now, uh, if you can, uh, so one of you needs to uh, open your computer. So you can uh, go online on, on GitHub, and it's in, in code. So where is it? Here. So just go online here, uh, code, and then you can just download this Jarrett sequence. Okay. <laughs> so gotta gotta run the code, and uh, again one, two, and three, and then you get all the numbers. And the numbers you need to write on a piece of paper because these are the numbers you want to work with. And so here is what I'm suggesting in terms of uh, writing numbers. So top left would be your root number one, two, three. Top right is the random number, and in center you can write the corresponding index, and then, uh, well, of course not yet, but once you're done, you're going to be writing the result uh, on your piece of paper. So make sure you get the index correctly, because obviously the Kubernetes sum is very dependent on the index. So you need to have the group number, the index, and, and the number corresponding to the index. Right? So already you can uh, use the super computing. <laughs> That's that. So right now, only the top left and top right number. Right, and the index. Yeah. And the index. Oh, the index is the paper. Well, it's the index corresponding to the random number, right? On the previous, you know, basically, here you say 1, 2, 66, 2, 6, 19, 3, 6, 23, and so on. But you need the index, right? If you just write the random number, uh, you can get mixed up. So make sure you have the index and the random number and your group. You got it right. Okay, so let's, let's get going. So, uh, yeah, try to keep it organized so, you know, uh, you get out of here <laughs> in a timely fashion. Because I want to, uh, you guys to spend time you know, thinking how to do it, the fun part. Yeah, so we can just pair up. Two minutes to go. What's that? Just write 15 minutes. Oh, you're right. Well, I think we'll be doing it. Yeah. Right, so like, two minutes to go. There's always been more time. Yeah. Right, so we're going to
So let me know when you're done so I can uh, move on to the actual uh, rules of the game and explain how, how you do this. There's some uh, rules. Okay, so let, let, let's get going. Uh, we're taking a lot of time. We haven't even started. <laughs> the real fun is this. Okay, so I don't know. This is really good. So you guys are good? Yeah. Okay, you're good. You guys are good? Yeah, right in parallel. Oh. Okay. Almost done? I want to see two people. This should be a good one. Yeah, we're relying on you. 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 Okay, you guys have multiple rules before ready? There's no error checking on the student process. There's no error checking on making sure that I actually write it down. Three. That's when we're asking for the uh, 
So you guys are good? Yeah, so like the first class yeah, is for order or for order to choose the yeah. grid yeah. size. Yeah. So you just have one order and you divide it. You size it. You guys are but for the block implementation, you want it as well. So uh, over all orders. So it would basically... Okay, so let's, uh, so let, let's continue, okay? I want to, uh, to move on. Okay, so make sure you write the correct index and random number, okay? Uh, it's a little bit frustrating as an exercise because, you know, it's actually not easy to get everything correct, but that's the goal, so be very, try to be rigorous. Okay, so here are the, the rules. Okay, here are the rules. Uh, okay, so uh, let's, let's pay attention. Uh, so basically the idea is to, you know, sort of reproduce the behavior more or less of a, of a, of a computer, of different parts of a computer. So, okay, so first, I'm going to define you know, this memory location, which is basically an area where you can store a piece of data. So in your case, so it could be a register file or memory location. So in your case, it's a piece of paper. Okay, and uh, on the, so on a piece of paper, you can only write a single number at a time. Okay, so you can uh, obviously strive for, you know, erase a number to write a new one, but you cannot not have more than one number written on a piece of paper, okay? Uh, and so this is sort of for the next rule. So, you know, memlock is full when there is actually something written on it, and it's empty when, you know, nothing is written. Okay, so memlock is a number written on a piece of paper. Okay, so now, you know, it's going to be up, up to you to kind of organize, but there's going to be three types of players that, you know, are allowed to do different things. Okay, so there's going to be some mem players that are sort of holding the data and you know, orchestrating things a little bit. There's going to be some net players that essentially, uh, you know, bring data from memory to processing units. And then there's going to be some players that are essentially responsible for doing the additions. Okay, so each player has only one type, but, you know, you can uh, divide yourself amongst these categories however you want. So actually this is, you know, you want to make sure that it's well balanced, okay, that there's not like a, a if you have only one processing unit, you know, it's going to be really busy and everybody's going to be waiting on, on that person. So you want to, you know, kind of evaluate how long it takes to do each operation and sort of allocate resources accordingly. Okay, so, uh, so first the MEM players. So MEM players, uh, those are essentially, uh, uh, you know, take pieces of paper and they can uh, simply copy or, uh, you know, strike through numbers. So essentially no operation but they can, you know, uh, um, uh, well, basically, actually, the strike through, the other way, strike through, but the, the most thi important thing is they're gonna be the ones that sort of organize the calculation, okay? So there's no real exact equivalent, would be like the computer program, if you wish, but they're the guys who are essentially going to determine, you know, what's the next operation to do and so on, uh, and give, you know, these mem logs, the pieces of paper to the net guy, okay? So, all right, so now uh, runners, so this is, this is important, this is to simulate the delay between, you know, transferring data from memory to processing unit. Okay, so very important. Uh, so you can take numbers from, you know, uh, the med guys and you can bring that to the processing units and back. Okay, so you cannot hold more than three med locks at a time, so the idea is basically you know, the operation is you uh, take two numbers, you add the, the two numbers and write the results on the third piece of paper. So this is sort of the basic, you know, operation. So hence, net player, you know, uh, is going to be holding, you know, uh, these three pieces of paper. Okay, so it grabs three pieces of paper from MEM, brings those three pieces of paper to a processing unit. Uh, then typically there's an exchange. Processing units gives back three, three and, you know, exchange. And then uh, the net player brings back the three pieces of paper. So the men guys are going to be sort of holding all uh, the pieces of paper, but then there's sort of a, a bottleneck as to you know how many pieces of paper net uh, can carry. And the processing units, you know, that, that's basically just uh, arithmetic units. So it takes two input and one output, and that's the only thing that it can do. Okay. So only three mem locks at a time for the net player. Okay, and then finally, you know, processing units. So this one is sort of the, at some level, the, well, actually, the, the net players have to run very fast. <laughs> the, uh, the men players have to think and uh, mostly get organized. 
And the PU player is sort of, you know, um, you have to be fast. You basically just simply just take two numbers. So you have three pieces of paper, take two numbers. So one piece of paper should be, must be empty, okay? So this is where, you know, the main guys need to make sure that, you know, there's some space on the paper, so it's numbers are uh, stricken through, whatever. So you have two, mem two papers with numbers, one paper, no number, and basically just do the operation. Just add, write the result, and then give it back to a net, a net player. Okay, so a net player can just arrive, give the papers, maybe wait, or you know, uh, if you have many nets and uh, one PU, you know, the nets can keep going back and forth. Um, okay, so the only thing you can do is is two and write on the third one. So if you want to do more operations, you need to give those papers to somebody else. Okay, to to a net. So here I thought about this. <laughs> How much running is going to be involved in this exercise? <laughs> so I decided on 20 meters. Well, I, you know, I'll obviously just put some marks down there. But you know, roughly 20 meters between PU and a mem. So this is this is kind of an important number uh, because it's you know the PU in principle. So obviously there's this issue of being organized. Okay. So. Uh, so the lead guys actually, it's not tricky to figure out, you know, how to do it. Uh, but if you're really organized, then, you know, you can keep uh, bumping numbers. So the PU, you can do the operations using your uh, cell phone or whatever, the, the, the addition. So it can be, you know, reasonably fast. So for example, 20 meters, I would say you want to maybe have, uh, you know, two net or maybe even three running, right? You only have one running then uh, this guy will do operations faster than the guy running. Okay? Uh, and, and you get tired, so you run slower, so there's <laughs> even more guys running. Okay, uh, so basically this is it. Okay, you have to pick a team name. And then I guess uh, we're gonna go. So we're right here. Uh, so I look for a good location. And we're gonna go to the, basically the oval. Uh, on these logs here, there's some space. Uh, so right now we're just going to leave this building, just walk over there. I'll let you think about, uh, so you know, we can talk along, uh, along the way. Yeah, we took a lot of time to get ready. Uh, so maybe 15 minutes, you know, 30 minutes from the end of the class. So uh, start discussing how to organize yourself and then we'll, uh, I'll give you some more time to think and then we'll get started over there. So main thing is to figure out what sort of algorithm you want to do, how to organize yourself, and who does what, and it's really a question of sort of organizing uh, everybody in the team. So let's, uh, let's get going, and you guys can talk along the way.